Hello and welcome to Starry Flowers, a short little visual novel developed by Nam Nam Nami, available on Ichio. And well, usually this developer often makes games about girls liking girls. You know, that's kind of that's kind of her thing. Um, but this one is actually about a boy who likes a boy. It's like topsy turvy. It's like opposite day. You know, it's crazy. But let's check it out, cause why not? I don't know. It looks cute, so let's just press start. I believe it's uh well I guess we'll see. The, the, the two main characters are characters from Nam Nam Nami's previous games. Um you know, basically she's just shipping <laughs> she's shipping her OCs together. But anyway. Hello and welcome to the deliciously romantic tale my first love heart. Oh boy. There's just one thing before we begin. I can grant you the power to choose my accessories at various points in the story. I'm being very gracious to offer such a thing. You know, uh... Oh, you know, heart. Okay, it's weird because it's an emo in the beginning of a sentence. If you use it, you better make me look as adorable as possible. This little feature has no effect on the story otherwise. It's simply for your entertainment, should you wish for it. Would you like to enable the dress-up feature? Ah oh, yes, the most important feature of any video game. Without further ado, let's get ready for my first date with Pastel. All right. You put some earrings, put dark earrings, put some ribbons, blue ribbons, a little flower crown. I always see that as a meme, I feel like. And remember Tumblr? I don't know if Tumblr still exists. You know, there was that one time where I feel like a lot of people left uh, because they had a little policy involving, you know, like adult content. But anyway. I feel like that was like a meme where they just, put, they, they, they just gave a bunch of characters like flower crowns all the time or something. I don't know why people did that, but that's what they did. Anyway, a crown. Very small crown, by the way. It reminds me of Saber from Fate, uh, Fate Grand Order. Cat ears. Oh, yes, obviously. Bunny headband. Angel halo. Demon horns. Oh, okay, that's it, I guess. Mm, I don't know. I don't know what else. Is What's the other one? What's the other option? A choker, a dark choker, flower choker, blue flower. It's just blue flower. It's just it's in just there. Fairy wings, pre sparkles, a cat tail, lovely hearts, angel wings, and demon wings. I don't know actually. I feel like we just cosplay. <laughs> you know, we just cosplay. Um, I guess the the chokers and the earrings are not. You know, for some reason I don't like earrings though. You know, I, I don't disparage anyone from wearing earrings. It's just personally. I just think it looks... Well, it doesn't look bad necessarily. It's just that when I look at the earrings, I just think how painful it is, you know? It's like, you know, like, poke a hole through your ear? That, that sounds not fun, you know? I don't know. You have to go through like, a very painful process just to put these little, these little decorations on your ears. That's what I think of when I think, oh, look at earrings. That's just, just, that's just my first thought. Mm, you know, actually, I don't really like most of the... Okay, fine. I'll put some earrings. Choker, though. Uh, ironically, choker as well. When I think of chokers, I think of like... You're literally being choked, but not really, obviously, but... Uh, I just think of painful things when I look at <laughs> things like that. I don't, I don't know. I feel like the other ones... Uh, like blue flowers. It's just magical blue flowers. It's just an aura, you know? Like a video game. It's just like... It's just a buff. Okay, fine. I'll put on blue flowers. I feel like that fits the bus. You know, fairy wings doesn't make sense for me. Pretty sparkles. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Cat tail. I don't know. I can make, I can make uh, him into a cat girl. Or cat boy. Anyway. Hmm. Lovely hearts. Demon wings and angels doesn't really make sense, I feel like. That's that's another, you know, that's another visual novel that Nom Nom Nami did, you know? Involving angels and demons, sort of. Well, technically one was a was not an angel, sort of, but anyway. You know what? I'll put on blue flowers. Let's do that. Why not? I don't know if it, this doesn't matter at all. <laughs> it's just... But it's important. In some ways, it's very important. Anyway, alright. Time to start this. I'm gonna be honest. It's gonna be very, very sweet. It's just gonna be very wholesome. There's no twist or anything, you know? So it's just gonna be cute. Oh boy, I gotta get mentally prepared. Uh, sometimes it is, you know, more mentally prepared than like a horror game. Because it's just gonna be too sweet. Anyway, uh, today I met a boy at the candy shop. The moment I saw him, I just knew I couldn't leave without flirting a little. 
Oh boy. He was so delightfully flustered, which of course only made him that much cuter. When I told him to meet, him, meet me here, he could only manage to nod a response. So cute. I'm my third type to pursue. Oh, no. <laughs> there he is now. Okay, there he is. That's uh, Pastel from Syrup and the Ultimate Suite. I played that a long time ago, I think. It was uh, a part of one of the main characters, I guess. Yeah, I th well, I can't remember. Like, it was like implied that he's very... S I remember, actually. It was, it was implied that he's very powerful, actually. A very powerful, like, wizard or witch or whatever. Anyway, um... And oh, oh yeah, and Periwinkle, I believe. Periwinkle was uh, technically in... Uh, first kiss at the spooky soiree, I believe. Another of Nom Nom Nami's games that I played. I played the old version though. Technically, there's an updated version. I believe that involves Periwinkle, but uh, the old version, I don't think had him as a route. I think. But you know, I don't really feel like going back just to play you know a few new routes. So, but but yeah, but I did like play the old version of that game that involved him. So those are the two characters. Hey, hey. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Pastel, look at you. And here I thought you looked plenty good in that uniform. My heart was unprepared. A lot of hearts. So many hearts. How do you do that? How do you, like, communicate hearts and, like, you know, like, through audio? Anyway, um, sorry, is it too much? I can change. My, but I haven't even fully seen what's under that cloak of yours. It'd be such a waste to change prematurely. Uh, right, forget it then. Besides, it'd be my pleasure to unwrap you later on, my sweet. <laughs> so what's this game? Ah, now shall we head to dinner? Okay, lead the way. Good. I truly didn't expect it. He definitely seemed the type to have a more modest sense of style. Thigh highs with such a short skirt. Or was it a dress? I only briefly glimpsed it. I'm quite looking forward to seeing more tonight. Heart. So many hearts. Why is it so much? Triangle. Or not, well, not triangle. Was it like... The keyboard, you know? It was like... What do you call that symbol? <laughs> it's like arrow. Left arrow three. The restaurant I decided on is one of my usual rotation. Good for a quite comfortable evening. For a variety of dates, you must have a variety of locations in mind. Tonight's mood is romantic rendezvous. Yes. It's a little high end, though not overtly so, just enough to make the night feel special. Pastel slides into the booth following Periwinkle's lead. Oh yeah, well, this is kind of like a third person, so I feel like this is, this is my narrator verse, uh, narrator voice. Pastel slides into the booth following Periwinkle's lead. This is my narrator voice. One hand holds his mantle in place, while the other brushes his bangs aside anxiously. Is this your first time? Huh? Coming here, I mean. What do you think I was asking? Uh, no, nothing. I've never been here before. It seems fancy. I'm a fan of the atmosphere. The food isn't bad either. Now let's get a few formalities out of the way, shall we? First and foremost, your pronouns? Oh, well, I just use he and him. What about you? The same. Though I don't necessarily mind being called by others, especially considering my presentation. Cause they're all, cause you're all like, <laughs> don't get me honest, you're all, you're all fanboys. Anyway, <laughs> understandable. Next expectations. I consider clarity in this regard to be key part of ensuring we both enjoy ourselves to the fullest. I use this sort of thing often, you see, as such I have a couple of ground rules to establish. Sure, I'm actually glad you brought it up. Oh, I'm not looking for anything serious. In fact, I kind of prefer when it's just a one-night thing. Okay, one-night standing? Mm-hmm, we're on this very same page then. Uh, not that I mind if, you know, we not wanting to do this again some other time. That's quite likely for me in this case. Certainly, I'm with that as well. Did you have any other ground rules? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Are you nervous? Yes. You can tell me to stop if you ever feeling too overwhelmed. That's the other rule. I, um... I like feeling overwhelmed to an extent. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. You like feeling overwhelmed? Wait a minute. I had assumed as much, but to hear you admit it all right. Ah, Pastel. In that case, I'll do my best to overwhelm you, my sweet. Oh my god, this dialogue. This is, like, too flirty for me. No, the, the, the Periwinkle's the one that, you know, is too much for me. Anyway... Ah. Uh, yes, this is shaping up to be a wonderful night indeed. The waiter came to take our order. I went first to give my sweet date a chance to compose himself. With our food ordered, Pastel finally drops his mantle to reveal... Is, I don't know, reveal what? I was gonna make a joke there, I don't know what joke to make though. I was gonna say like, his ultimate form, you know, or something. 
No, well, it is actually. It is his ultimate form right here. My, my, so it was a cute little dress after all. And here I thought you were saving the surprise for after dinner. Sorry, um, I started feeling awkward with the extra layer. Don't apologize, my only lament is not getting it taken off my, my son, my Stop doing that. You'll save the last few layers for me, won't you? What's this game? Mm-hmm. You know the developer, by the way, because I've been following their Twitter. They've been gushing over this game. They're gushing over their own game, by the way. They're very hyped up about it, so that's, you know, part of the reason I, I, I wanted to give it a chance. Is like, why do they like it so much? And maybe this is why. It's just like, the characters just... Periwinkle in particular. It's just very naughty. Anyway, um, that's all that matters then. I'm having a time in my life, and by the looks of it, so is Pastel. I live to tease cute witch boys. Cute witch boys. How fortunate that I come across the sweetest one today. He does work in a uh, sweet shop, you know? He, he is around sweets a lot. In fact, he has like a candy golem as a friend, I believe. You know, the character from the previous game. Or, the game he, or at least the game he comes from. And anyway, our food arrives before Pastel is able to recover. He can't even look the weird in the eye. How adorable. No, I mustn't overindulge or even eat our meal. There'll be plenty of time after dessert. Stop, stop with the... What's that word? What's the thing? What's the symbol called again? Uh, the till... The till days? Till days? Till days? Anyway. Pastel takes a few bites of his food before speaking up. So, Periwinkle, what do you do for a living? And they always say that, don't they? It's always awkward first introductions and what do you do for a living, hmm? The, you know, the boring questions. Uh, besides tease you until you're barely able to speak? Yes, besides that. My line of work, then. Mm, I suppose I can tell you. I'm an aromagician. Aromagician. I specialize in creating pleasant scents. Okay. Is it? <laughs> you know, something about essential oils. Anyway. Periwinkle tugs his wand out from his sleeve and lightly taps the can on the table. In a small burst, the atmosphere shifts around the pair. The candle's original aroma is quickly forgotten as it's replaced by something new and cozier. Oh, that is nice. Now, that's what I heard, you know, when I, whenever I hear essential oils, I always hear about people who scam people, you know, with essential oils. Even though, I mean, I, I, I imagine there is like a subset where people take it seriously in the sense that actually it's not meant to cure anything. It's just, it's just to smell good. You know, that's what essential oils are meant to be. They're just little candles, you know, or whatever. And then you just use it to, to relax, you know? You don't use it to cure cancer or whatever. But that's what I've always heard, you know? Whenever I see, like, a news article, it's always something about, like, people, like, selling essential oils to, like, I don't know, gain immortality or something. In this world, though, I mean, in this world, technically, it's magic. So can you gain immortality by smelling some kind of scent? Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, um... What smells that? I'm no good at pinpointing stuff like this. Vanilla, I thought it suited you though. Although, I'm starting to think a more lustful scent might have been better fit. What is a lustful scent? How's that work? What does that even mean? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Just that you've done nothing but exceed my expectations. I'm not doing anything. Pastel retreats back behind his glass of water, overwhelmed by embarrassment once again. I did say I'd go a little easy on him, didn't I? It's just too ir irresistible. Oh no. I don't know how much I can handle this game. This game's like, I mean, it's pretty short, but like, I think it's around three hours. A little bit less than that. I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> anyway. Anywho. I bought it sell sense like this. I bought it and sell sense like this. I can't speak. I bought it and sell sense like this, like this one. It's fairly lucrative work once you build a reputation for yourself. Uh, sounds fulfilling. What about you, Pastel? What kind of magic do you specialize in? Oh, I had mostly been living without magic until recently. Without magic? I can't imagine. It's not so bad. I mean, humans do it, so why not? I suppose that's true. Those, like, freaking mug- <laughs> Those freaking- Those freaking muggles. What do you call it? What was it called in Harry Potter? Muggles? Is what you call it? You know, people who without magic? Those plebs? We, we are mages. We can do everything we want. We just flick a wand and like, mm, yes. Anyway, I very directly make a living off of mine, so I find myself in quite a bind if I wasn't able to use it. Not that I mind being bound from time to time, you know. Oh, you're in a bondage as well? My god. How do you keep doing that? 
Every time I think we're talking about something innocent. I just can't help myself, can I? Deliberate word choice, my sweet. Would you like to would you like me to hold back a little more? No, it's okay. I was just kinda impressed. We finish up our meals and decide on sharing a slice of strawberry cheesecake for dessert. I oh, guess cheesecake, the one cake I can't eat for some reason. I'm allergic to specifically cheesecake for some reason, and that's true. I don't know why. But every time I eat cheesecake, it just causes my nose to like hurt. I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, Pastel deliberately leaves uh, the larger bits of strawberries for me. I wonder, is it because he doesn't like them, or is he that kind? Either way, that has quickly become my most favorite day of the past few months. It's not. He doesn't do much though. He just, he just blushes a lot, but I guess that's maybe that's the point. Tell me more about yourself, Pastel. I'm afraid the only thing I know is that you work at the renowned Atelier Suites. Oh, um, there's not much else to know. Surely there's plenty more than this, just that. Any hobbies, perhaps? Cleaning, maybe. Any non work related hobbies, dear? Sorry, I never know how to answer these type of questions. My best friend is an alchemist, so I've recently been going on little adventures to help gather ingredients for her craft. Oh, there's something interesting. Other than that, I honestly don't get out much. I have my hands full running the store. So diligent. Does that does this mean this is your first day out in a while? Uh, yeah, I guess it is. I'm honored you're willing to share with me then. Yeah, I don't think I ever would have tried this place if you hadn't brought me in. So it's been worth it, worth it so far. Thanks, Periwinkle. The table has been long cleared, and yet our conversation continued through the night. This place is never too busy, which always leaves me to free to linger here without the guilt of taking up any much needed table space. The longer the date, the more satisfying the finale. That's something I live by. What do you mean finale? <laughs> what is... This, this is not a this is not explicit game as far as I know. But like... I don't know, man. Periwinkle is just incredibly lewd. Rushing straight to the climax inevitably gets a bit dull after a while. I want to enjoy this night to, the, to its fullest. <laughs> Pastel, do you see the witch at the table over there? Hmm? Don't be too obvious now. The one with the tall hat, you see? I mean, they both have tall hats, but I guess this one's taller. Uh, yeah, I see them. I brought them here about two weeks ago. I guess they agreed to uh, made a nice date spot. Uh, I... I'm actually, I... The guy is sitting across from them. I'm pretty sure I've been with him before. No, surely you're joking, Pastel. Shh, don't say my name so loudly. Just keep your head low. I'm sure you won't notice. Always oh, just look this way. Ah! Only kidding. P Perry. Oh, nickname already. You are moving so fast. You're the one who's calling me my sweet all night. <laughs> it's very cliche. Well, you are, aren't you? Whose fault is it that you share a name of candy? I guess it was pastel. I guess pastel is a candy. I actually don't know. It's pastel's candy. When I think of pastel, well, I think of the other pastel, you know, pastel T, like P A S T E L. Pastel, unless you pronounce it differently, I don't know. But I think of that pastel, you know. Then I, then I think of like pastel colors, you know. Anyway, well, it's not mine. Still, do you think those two make a good couple? How should I know? Just imagine the kind of person I go on a date with and pair them with the other. What kind of person is that? You, for one. <laughs> Maybe they wouldn't be so good together. My, am I supposed to take offense to that? Nah, that guy was just kind of pushy. My, you're too much, Pastel. We eventually made our way out of the restaurant that night. It had gone quite late already. When's the last time I stayed to closing? There was never a moment of awkward silence between us. Only Pastel's embarrassed pauses. Clear attempts to steer his mind away from my debauchery. <laughs> debauchery is interesting to word. Gosh. This is like the lewdest game Nom Nom Nami's ever made, I feel like. A lot of Nom Nom Nami's games are more wholesome than this. This one's like lewd, I feel like. Though, well, I, don't know. I don't I don't think they've strayed away from uh, more explicit content before in the past. I believe there's a more explicit comic. I, well, you have to buy it, but I believe there's more explicit comic that they've made before in the past. But anyway, as we wander back in the night area, he's the first one to speak up again. You could at least let me cover the tip. Nonsense. I'm the one who asked you tonight. You don't have to cover a thing. In fact, I prefer if you didn't cover your, I don't know, your body or something. I don't know if you're supposed to say something about that, like that. Okay, I saw that one coming this time. You don't have to say it. Too easy. But really, it's a shame to hide such a cute outfit from the world. I don't have the confidence. Reminds me of my youth. 
You'll get there, my sweet. One day you'll be able to toss aside any feelings of inadequacy and wear all sorts of dare outfits of pride. No, it's not a matter of self-esteem or anything. It's just, if anyone I knew saw me in this, I would die. So that's how it is, hmm? I'm being treated to a more intimate side of this witchboard right now. Heart. So many hearts. We walk together on the street lights until we reach our original meeting place. Would you like me to escort you home? No, that's okay. Then if you don't mind, my place is just down the street. Perhaps you'd like to accompany me. Yes, I, I mean, I wouldn't want you to have, have you walk alone in the dark. Such a gentleman. Okay. Paramoko expertly slides his hand up and under Pastel's mantle, linking arms as they go along. They walk in comfortable silence toward Paramoko's house. Well, this is me. I had a most lovely evening. Thank you for accompanying me to dinner tonight. I had fun too. Thanks for inviting me out. Pastel fidgets as if he has something to ask, but can't find the words. Pastel. Paramoko takes a step closer. Yes? He leans in, pausing for any sort of reaction, only for Parcel's lips to come close, clumsily crashing forward. He's more of a Russian than I thought. Then again, I just spent all night winding him up. <laughs> winding him up, eh? So cute. Ah, Parcel, I just remembered. Since we're here, would you like to come and sample some of my magic? What do you mean? What, everything the Paracle says, I feel like is just a euphemism now, <laughs> you know? What do you mean, sample some of your magic? I like that, yes. Very well, then. We both knew from the beginning that he would be staying the night, of course. It's just so much more fun drawing it out like this. But if that kiss is an indication of things to come, may have been a little overboard tonight. If so, we're in for quite a sleepover. Hopefully we fade to black before that. This is the only witch. Witches as a Maho Shoujo. We're messy. You don't have a messy house, by the way. I'm gonna clean up. Sorry about the mess. Such as haven't found the time to tidy up. The door closes loudly behind them. When Pastel doesn't respond, Perico turns back to face him. <laughs> this strip off. Pastel's back is against the door as he fumbles to untie his mantle. He's completely run out of patience, hasn't he? I probably simply have no choice but to indulge him. Okay. This is a... Uh, again, this is not... <laughs> this is not an explicit game as far as I know. But maybe it's a little bit mature. Anyway... I shouldn't keep you waiting a second longer now, should I? I don't want to make <laughs> those noises. Uh, soon I'll take you to something a little easier to take off. Looking at this good comes at a price, you see. I promise I won't keep you waiting. Okay. I'm like I'm reading fanfic now. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm reading fanfic. I've been I've been tricked into reading fan fiction. I feel like, except it's not really fan fiction because it's just you know, it's not. A fan that made this, it's just the original creator that made this. Perigo gives him another peck on the lips and leads him through the cluttered living room to his bedroom. Fade to black. No, 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 no. Naughty boys, you, you don't see any of that. It took me ages to get out of the bed that morning. After all, I just couldn't stop thinking about how absolutely adorable Pastel was. He scrambled out of here almost as soon as he woke up, saying he couldn't be late for work. Such a shame. Would have been nice to get one last round in. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. So many euphemisms. Like, it's like uh, EPS, you know, euphemisms per second. You know, Periwinkle has a high amount of that. I did get a kiss goodbye, though. That's nice to feel like a housewife for a moment. But I should get to work, too. I have an order to fill, don't I? Periwinkle finally rolls out of bed and gets ready for the day. The order in question is for a nearby apothecary. Did you know? A rum magic like mine is actually quite good for you. It's got nothing on actual healing magic, but the calming atmosphere it creates does wonders for one's mood. This particular batch is meant to help with insomnia. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm reminded of another visual novel that I played recently. Uh, What's it called? Cafe in the Clouds, you know? Where it's like a story about curing somebody's insomnia. Anyway, which is ironic considering how late I stayed up with Pastel. Stop it. Stop being so- anyway. I can't like- th that's just the Periwinkle's character, I guess. It's just lewd like 90% of the time. Oops, can't be getting distracted now. I really need to finish up these last few bottles. Periwinkle closes his eyes and draws his wand. Large drops form at its tip, falling into the empty bottle one by one. With each drip, the bottle's contents swell and after only the fifth drop is completely filled. 
Perfect. It's so much easier to finish with these for clear mind. I can't help if it if a refreshing night out is the only way to regain my focus. Although I probably could have got one of these done last night, but I still have been so impatient. No, no, I mustn't let my mind wander too far from work now. Perimco feels the remaining bottle, screwing the lids on as he goes. There. Now my house is going to smell like lavender. I better head out before I'm lulled to sleep by my own magic. Alright, accessorize once again. We could change it, I guess. You know, I don't know. Mm, I like to keep it the same, you know. Can I save this? Yeah, my favorite, I guess. Though, we're, we're, we're being more professional now, right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're like... Because we're, we're selling things now, rather than like, um... Uh... Going on a day, so obviously we should put on the demon horns and demon wings. Because something, something else is like something like uh, something to do with the, the the Faustian bargain, right? That's how it works. By becoming a demon, we can sell things a lot better, right? I don't know. The apothecary is only a short walk away, but I've never managed to walk in his doors on time. Perhaps because it's so close, I always underestimate the time it takes to reach them, or reach it rather. I can hear the owner tapping her foot with impatience as soon as I open the door. Astragalus, I have that special order ready for you. You're late again, Periwinkle. Last track of time, you'll forgive me, won't you? You're literally my only provider who has no respect for appointments. <laughs> actually, I, that actually does piss me off a little bit. That does annoy me when people don't, you know, uh, keep to their appointments. But anyway, that's simply not true. I never miss a date. There's the problem. You are getting late again, weren't you? How vulgar. Had a romantic evening a very cute boy. Who then ended up sleeping over? Well, you had all week to fill the order. Try getting it done in advance next time. Yes, ma'am. Let's see what you brought. I've worked with Astragulus for a few years now. She's completely immune to my charms. Shocking, to say the least. But it's meant we've been able to rank good friends all this time. Or, hmm, let's see. Uh, Stragulus, would you consider us to be good friends? I put up with you. My, but do you put up with anyone? You must really like me. You got a favor to ask or something? Is that what you're getting at? No. I was just thinking of how to categorize our relationship. Business associate works just fine, doesn't it? Come now, surely you consider us to be closer than that. I know better to get involved with you, Periwinkle. Why, whatever do you mean? You're too dazzling. I take that as a compliment. Great, now will you stop distracting me? I'm trying to count. Yes, we're definitely good friends. <laughs> okay, th that's, how you, that's what you got from that, I guess. Too dazzling, though. I'm not sure there is such a thing. I would be wrong with it if there was. What point is there in shining not as brightly as one can? Astragulus, uh, I assume that's how you say Astragulus, finishes counting the bottles, sighing in faint exasperation, exasperation <laughs> as she marks them off her checklist. <clears throat> You may be always late, but you deliver quality every time. You're consistent of nothing else. The waiting is part of the fun. It builds excitement, would you say? Nope, just builds frustration for me. But at least you've always come through. She unlocks a small drawer behind the counter and takes out an envelope with Periwinkle's name scribbled on it. Here's the rest of your payment. Don't spend it all in one place. Yes, money. Witch money, you know, magic money. Oh, I couldn't if I tried. Really, you're too generous. Astragalus rolls her eyes and begins stocking the shelves of her new inventory. Two or three orders a month. That's all it takes to support myself entirely through this apothecary. Hard to believe my magic is really worth so much, but who am I to complain? It's certainly a more favorable balance compared to the kind of work I was doing years ago. And I do, the, do enjoy the freedom. The excessive amounts of time I have for partying. For dates. Ah, on that note. Okay, pair of I go on dates and parties all the time. <laughs> With all that business out of the way, would you like to hear about my date? Would I like to? Not necessarily. Please, Astragalus, as someone with no romance in your own life, at least you can do live vicariously through mine. The no romance thing's my choice. I listen to you gush for your own damn sake. For my sake? Yeah, I'm afraid you might actually implode if you had no one to talk about to this, uh, talk to about this stuff. I'm actually making a number of sacrifice every day that you come in here with new tales or romantic conquests. Hmm. If you're truly suffering, I shall desist. Well, that's the thing, though. I do like seeing you all walked up over something, even though I don't understand it myself. Ah, so there is a mutual benefit. You'll listen, then. Yeah, at least until I, until I got 
get all of this put away. After that, I'm kicking you out for the day. Fair enough. I better be brief then. He's the absolute cutest thing. I picked him up at the candy shop yesterday. Fluffy pink hair with golden eyes, naturally rosy cheeks that make him look as if he's always a little embarrassed by something. He's shy, but not the type that comes paralyzed in the bedroom. <laughs> Perwinkle, for the last time, I do not need to hear about the bedroom stuff, you know? I mustn't give any details, although the details are the best part. This is a safe for work zone only. Break that rule and you're out of here. <laughs> you know, you're in the safe for work. My apologies, I'll refrain. Anyway, my point is, he's extremely cute. Adorable, in fact. Right, so standard affair for you. Absolutely not. If it was just your average cutie, would I be emphasizing his cuteness so much? I mean, probably. I kind of do that all the time, though. I don't meet these people, so it's all the same to me. How can it be? The intensity is so drastically different. Perhaps so intense that I'm having trouble explaining it properly. I'll say. All you really told me so far is that he's cute and shy. He's kind as well. He saved the best part of dessert for me without even asking. Wow, I would have never that one. Oh, enough of your sarcasm. When all my favorite details are off limits, what do you suppose I'm left with? Well, what really matters is that you had a good night, even if it meant you couldn't get here on time like I asked. Ah, I'm already hoping to see him again, to be honest. Oh yeah? Don't hear from that from you very often. Really? But I've gone on second dates all the time. Oh, this guy got a name. Mm, I don't kiss and tell. No, actually, you tell me about everyone you kiss. Come on, if he's really the absolute cutest, it's, not a, sh it's a shame to keep him anonymous, right? Not like I'm going to tell anyone anyways. Fine, his name is Pastel. Hmm. Even his name is cute. Right? Oh, that reminds me, he sold me some candies that share his name. Would you like to try? Sure, how could a witch turn out free candy? Perwinkle digs into his bag and pulls out one of the pastels. He hands the candy to Astragulus, who promptly unwraps and pops into her mouth. Hmm. Oh, these are good. Where'd you say this candy shop was? Not far from here. I'll give you directions. Alright, there you go. Shortly after telling Astragulus where to find until your swish, she unceremoniously kicked me out. Literally. With a big boot. She long finished putting all those bottles away after all. With money in my pocket and no more work to be done for the moment, I'm free to begin pursuing my next date. You know, it sounds great. I don't know how hard it is to use magic in this universe but it seems kind of great to just pop in some like like uh sweet selling potions you know or well, not sweet necessarily but you know nice smelling potions rather and sell them and then you know make a quick buck and that's it your rent is paid that's so that's that's, that's great anyway but wherever should i go it's a weekday too early for parties too early for drinks it also seems like Periwinkle is a big extrovert, by the way. <laughs> it's like, he just parties all day, I feel like. Or if he had the chance anyway, he would just do that. Uh, opposite of me. I suppose I could return home and straighten up the place, however. Why would I busy myself with chores when I could be celebrating another order successfully filled? Before Wink Periwinkle can decide where to go, a familiar witch approaches him. Periwinkle? Okay. I don't know who you I mean well, I don't know well the other person I didn't know who, who either I guess it's just another new character rather is what I'm trying to say oh Cassia so lovely to see you yay I'm so glad we ran into each other how to describe Cassia she's exceedingly cuddly we met at a party one night during which she latched in my arm and never let go quite endearing since then we've gone a little days from time to time she really loves my magic so I tend to spoil her whenever we're together did you need something dear Oh yes, I tried coming over last night, but you didn't seem to be home. Ah, oh, you came to visit me, I'm flattered. I must have been out to dinner at the time. Sorry that I missed you. No, it's okay. I was mostly looking to talk. So, um, if you're available right now, do you want to go to a cafe? That sounds perfect. I would love to. These extroverts, you know, these extroverts, they just go and just talk to each other? Weird. Anyway, um, uh, they're like, Anyway, we take our seats at the nearby cafe. It's a pleasant, sunny little place. I've come here often with all sorts of other witches. Cassie orders the usual hot chocolate over extra marshmallows while at the side of a simple rose tea. Oh, Periwinkle, could you make my marshmallows smell like roses too? With pleasure. Periwinkle wands, draws from her sleeve, and gives Cassie's cup a little quick little tap. That's, a, that's amazing. I think you just do that. 
Life is easy when it's just magic. You know, like, <sighs> Yay, it really smells just like roses. Just as you asked, my uh, dear, it may slightly affect the taste, so let me know if you like the smell undone. Cassia dips her spoon in and lifts the marshmallows to her lip. Or blah, blah, blah. Cassia dips her spoon in and lifts a marshmallow to her lips, blowing on it lightly before popping into her mouth. No, it's wonderful. Eh <laughs> eh. <laughs> it's like it's such a anime giggle, I feel like, you know? Eh <laughs> he anyway. She truly can find a joy in any little moment, such as light. Definitely a contender for the title of Absolute Cutest Witch, though I would call her Absolutely Cute rather than Absolute Cutest. It takes more than cuteness alone to earn the title of Absolute Cutest Witch. That's where the difference lies, of course. But what am I thinking? It's how rude it is to begin ranking my dates in such a way. I must be stuck in the thought from my earlier conversation with Astragalus, trying to put Pastel's cuteness into words. He really is something special. Ah, it's all in the contrast. He's his polite, well-mannered, and proper exterior, concealing such intense desire, begging you to make the first move and going ahead and take it on his own as soon as you. You know, I feel like I mean, I think you're just just describing an introvert. You know, it's just anyway. I feel you've just never met an introvert before. Uh, enough of that. There's someone else in front of me now, isn't there? Cassel Cassia continues happily sipping her hot chocolate before speaking up again. I miss you, Periwinkle. I've been so busy of packing, I haven't had a chance to see you at all. Packing? And just where you all headed off to? Oh, that's right. I never had a chance to tell you. I'm finally moving in with my partners. In two more days, the three of us will be all sleeping in the same bed. Multiple partners, eh? Well, that sounds cozy. Congratulations. Reminds me of, um, Nom Nom Nami's other game. Uh, Lonely Wolf Treat? Or, well, the series, actually. That's like a canonical, you know, three-way relationship. As well. Hey, thank you. I've looked forward to it for so long. It sounds like you're about to enter a lovely domestic life. You deserve it. Uh -huh. I'm really happy. But I'm speaking of my partners. You've still never even met them. True, but I can imagine they're wonderful. Just from how you've talked about them. Right, but um, what if you didn't have to imagine? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I was hoping you might all be able to go on a group date sometime. Oh? Yeah, because I like... I just think you're so wonderful, Periwinkle. I just want them to know you too. Hmm. Although it sounds like fun, I'm a bit... Wait, before you say no, they're both very easygoing and so loving and nice, I can promise it won't be overwhelming. That unfortunately isn't where the issue lies, my dear. I know you said you didn't want to get involved before, but I just know that we will all get along, to, along so well. I'd like to reassure you however I can, but I understand if you still turn me down. Matters of love are so tricky, aren't they? I still recall the first time something like this was asking me. I've been, no, I've been nervous going in, but I also never entered a group situation before. I attributed my anxiety solely to that. However, it quickly became clear that I just wasn't suited to all, suited to it at all. I do love to spoil each of my partners, but it's strictly one at a time. Perhaps I was less scarred by the breakdown in communication, the passionate fires of a long-established romance. Surely Cassie and Paris are magnificent people. It may indeed be fun for a night. But becoming entangled in a committed relationship is something I've always avoided from the beginning, isn't it? I also, do, I mean, I was just a, not really related at all, to be honest. But just in general, like a group of people, I don't know. I prefer like one. on I mean, not not even like romance, but like just in general. But like, I prefer one on one. You know, having more people in the group just I, I, I don't know. I can't handle it. Conversations go too fast when it's like multiple people at once talking over each other. I don't know. I'm just a weirdo. Anyway, this is all very sweet, but I do have to decline. Ah, but I can't help but feel a little brokenhearted. I apologize. Truly is nothing person personal. It's nothing personnel. Teleports behind you. No, um. Oh, I know. I don't take offense or anything. That's just sad. Now that I'm going to be living with them and knowing you don't want to meet them, I think it's best we just break things off. Yes, I agree. As you say, it's for the best. I hope we can still be friends, though. Of course. I'm sure our paths will cross every now and again. Yeah, thank you for always treating me so well, Periwinkle. Mm -hmm, it's always my pleasure. Alright. Even casual relationships can end in breakups like this. This is largely why I tend to prefer one-night affairs. Things can just become so messy as these evolve. As Cassie and I go our separate ways, I can't help feeling a little blue. Perhaps I'll return home for the day after all. Well, casual dating. I mean, I can be honest, not really my thing. 
He's just casually dating a bunch of people. I mean, you know, I guess for a lot of people, that's what just what they do. I I don't know. Maybe I'm just old-fashioned. But when I think of relationships, I definitely think like one at a time, you know? Just in general. And then if you want to break it off, you break it off. But, you know, it's like... I can't really... Ha I, I feel, I mean, for me in general, like... Handling, I don't know, maybe it's, um, people have different ideas of what casual relationships are, I guess. But I don't know, I just feel like it's it's a big chunk of your time, you know? It's like to handle all these relationships all at once. In my opinion, anyway. I wouldn't have time to play video games, for example. <laughs> you know, but anyway. Horwinko quickly changes to something more comfortable, dropping his bag unceremoniously onto the couch. I could use an afternoon nap. Yes, that's precisely what I need. I'll wake up feeling refreshed and ready to go back out in town. You know, whenever I, whenever I take a nap, though, I always just end up sleeping too much. You know, I sleep in way, way too long. And then and, and then it's like 4 a.m. And it's like I can't get back to sleep, so I just end up staying awake the entire time. And then I feel really, really, really tired, even though I took a nap. Um, anyway, he shoves some blankets aside and collapses onto the couch. And when he does, the contents of his bag spills onto the floor. Ah. Lazily leaning over to gather it up, he notices the candy is from before. Was I too hasty in saying I hope to see Pastel again? I suppose I've forgotten the feeling of not being enough for someone. Usually these things tend to dissipate naturally, without confrontation or notice. So when they don't, it stings. Perwinko scoops up the candies, dropping all but one of them back into his bag. He settles into place on the couch, nestles in a tangled mess of blankets and cushions, and unwraps his chosen Pastel. Nom. It is sweet, though. What a shame that would be if I never got to taste it again. That's right. I can never resist the promise of an entertaining night. No matter what may come down the line. I'm a hopeless hedonist, after all. Nothing to be done about that. Isn't there like... Now I'm just reminded of Warhammer. This is, a, this is a completely different universe. But I'm reminded of Warhammer, by the way. Isn't there like a, like a, like a chaos god? You know, like an evil chaos god? That's like all about that? <laughs> you know, to be like a hedonist and everything? And they're like... Considered evil or something like that. It's, you know, anyway. Slainish, I think. You know, yeah, it's, it's the, the Warhammer is the one that goes like, Skulls for the Skull Throne. Blood for the Blood God. You know that one? Anyway. It's nothing to do with this. Uh, let fate decide, then. If he comes, he comes. And if we never meet again, I can always hold on to memory of our perfect date. Several hours later. There's a knock at the door. And right there on his doorstep, Perico is pleasantly surprised to find... This guy. Pastel, I wasn't expecting to see you again so soon. And treat me to another cute look, no less. Sorry, um, I couldn't stop thinking about... I mean, I realized last night I never actually got to sample your magic. <laughs> sample your sample magic. The sense you mentioned. Oh, that's right. We were quite preoccupied, hmm? Sampling a different kind of magic. Anyway, yeah, so that's why I'm here. He finally manages to make eye contact, but quickly averts his gaze once more. Um, were you in bed? Sorry, I shouldn't come so late. Mm, these aren't even my sexiest pajamas. I didn't even say anything about that. To answer your question, no, I wasn't. Although I did take a nap earlier this afternoon, I've otherwise been enjoying a relaxing night in. I'm so very glad I ended up going out. I would have missed all this flustered mess. <laughs> Don't you have cell phones? You know, don't you have like cell phones? Magic cell phones? You would think they have magic cell phones in, in this universe. Just just like text them or something. Uh, would you like to come in? Estelle nods vigorously in response. And then again, I feel like that might come with his own, you know, with his own like anxieties. Like you probably get ghosted, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. It's still a bit of a mess in here. I hope you don't mind. There's a path through. I've seen worse. Oh, maybe I'll let it spiral further into chaos then. I'm just so competitive, you know? I, w I was talking about the chaos gods. <laughs> chaos. I'm not sure that's a competition you really want to win. Mm, perhaps not. Perwinkle carefully steps over some of his clutter to dig through one of the boxes in the far corner of the room. Ah, here we are. My personal favorites. This row here contains some more... Potent scents, most of them for relaxation, things to calm the nerves. The rest I just happen to like. Sweet scents like strawberry, banana, bubblegum, and mango. Mango, mango. Not... I, 
I say mango because of manga, you know, because I always make this joke where it's like, instead of saying manga, I say mango. I feel like that's a meme. Anyway, but I, 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 I just somehow corrupted my pronunciation of that word. It's not mango, it's mango. Anyway. Is there a reason is there a reason you're only you're only naming candy flavors? Mm, must be a coincidence. Pastel picks out an unlabeled bottle filled with a pale pink liquid. What's this? Ah, oh, watch out. That one's an aphrodisiac, of course. Hmm. We'll see about that. Pastel looks locks eyes with Periwink as he opens a vial without hesitation. How bold. Oh, oh it's Peach. I almost expected to be overpowering. Ah oh, yes, well, the aphrodisiac bit was a bit was a lie, but I'm glad you like it. You're really good at this type of magic. I've never done anything like it. Would you like to try it on? Hmm? Oh no, I don't do perfume or cologne or anything like that. You never tried it. Oh, so would you say you're a perfume aversion then? I'm not. Women says things like that. In my line of work, you'd be surprised. It's probably just you. Maybe so. If you're not going to try, I don't have it back now, please. I could try. I just don't know how I'm supposed to apply it. May I? I still nods, handing over the small vial. Periwinkle seals the opening with his fingertips and swiftly tilts the bottle over and back. Here. Now you put it like around the neck area, I guess. He lightly rubs a spot on Pastel's neck, engulfing them both in the pleasant scent of his magic. Their eyes meet neither of them daring to be the first to move. Maybe the aphrodisiac bit wasn't a lie after all. Uh. Pastel breaks a spell, rushing forward with a sudden kiss, and then retreats just as quickly. I'm sorry, I just... He certainly is impulsive, not that I mind at all. I'm more than happy to go along with your little game, Pastel. Again? Like, this is... <laughs> Again. Oh no, my own magic's working too well. I guess there's no choice to have my way for you, my sweet. No, oh, no. Fade to black. <laughs> Pastel's half-hearted processes end there. Pyroko's hands were already upon him and would continue to be right for the rest of the night. Don't see any of that. Otherwise, I'll get banned. You know, if you see any of that, you get banned on the platform, on Twitch and YouTube. Over the next month or so, we fell into quite an enjoyable pattern. Pastel would show up at my doorstep maybe once or twice a week. Sometimes we go out to dinner, but mostly he'd just spend the night. It was starting to become almost routine, though each visit was somehow just as exciting as the last. The details of which I'll choose to keep private for Pastel's sake. That boy is unsatiable. <laughs> I will say that. Why is it this game? But again, this game is so loot. Much more so than the previous ones. Inevitably, after seeing someone for so uh, long enough, one begins to pick up on their habits. Cute habits. Like the way he kisses me on the cheek before rushing off to work in the early morning. The way he runs his hand through his hair when he's thinking really hard about something. Even his knock is specific. Once, lightly to test the waters, a pause as he gathers his courage in three firm and evenly spaced. I'm not sure which of these habits he's conscious of, but there's one I've decided he must be acting knowingly, which is his habit of leaving one of his personal effects behind which you visit. First a beret, a beret, is it beret, 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 uh, then an earring, his choker, and a bracelet. And then he returns after a few days with an apology, explaining he had just come to pick up whatever he left behind. Sure, Bristol, keep creating your little excuses to come back here. I have to go along with them. <laughs> what fun. I wonder what he'll come looking for this time. Peruko gathers up the discarded garments that have been left strewn across his bedroom, tossing them to a pile to be dealt with later. He couldn't possibly leave his underwear behind, could he? Now, that would be impossible to explain. An eerie sure, but there's no way he walked out of here with that like that. Peruko hums himself as he makes the bed, double-checking between the sheets while he's at it. Hmm. I'm almost disappointed. It's been so consistent up until now, I suppose he could just be that forgetful. Unable to find anything of pastels in my bedroom, I decided to spend the rest of the morning cleaning up the place. Now, mind you, I never let my house get dirty, only messy. <laughs> okay. Leaving garbage or food waste about is out of the question. Everything else, though. It's simply that many things don't make it back to their proper place, or rather, I can never decide on the proper place for many of my things. Toss them in the boxes and shove the boxes around the room and suddenly they've become unmanageable piles. To truly put everything away, these would all have to be emptied or sorted, a daunting task to be sure. 
but it has been a while since my last attempt. I may as well put in some effort. Where to begin? I suppose my work supplies have been a little difficult to navigate as of late. That's an achievable now goal now, isn't it? And practical as well. Haruko begins with a box of his favorite perfumes. They've been sitting out since one of Pastel's first visits. Ah yes, the aphrodisiac. <laughs> that was a fun night. I don't know how I feel about reading those lines. He packs the balls back into the places, then closes the box, sealing them safely inside. This should go. Hmm, perhaps we better just set it on high on the bookshelf. If I just rearrange things a bit, there should be room for everything. As Periwinkle begins setting things aside, a new pile is born, precariously teetering on the back of the couch. He places the box just where he wants it, then snacks his various bulks and knickknacks around it. Just as he's made his way through half of the pile, a small portion of it topples forward, bouncing safely on the couch cushions. Huh, top all you want. I was prepared. Hmm? He finally notices Pastel's jacket, which had expertly blended into blankets and cushions around it. Aha! Uh -huh. Just when I finally worked up the energy to clean up around here, what do I find? Yes, this is no mere case of forgetfulness. It was indeed a little game all along. Perwinkle giggly laughs to himself, excited and proven right. You've escalated too far, Pastel. To leave your jack behind is just ridiculous. He leaves me with no choice. I'll just have to return this myself. Okay, you're going to his you know, going to his place now. Perwinkle abandons what he was doing and scuts off to his room to get dressed. More accessories. You know, time to wear my favorite then, in that case. <laughs>